Hey guys, welcome back to Paracord Planet. Today we've got a bigger project for you. We're making a rattlesnake skin hat band. A little bit more involved of a project. If you haven't taken on a sanctified weave dog collar before, that might be a good place to start instead of with this one. Um, but we'll try to bring you along for the ride anyway. For this project, you're gonna need 25 feet of tan, 25 feet of brown blend, about 30 feet of brown snake, and then two three quarter inch D-rings. Let's dive right in. So on this jig, we'll be using the golf tee setup because we're gonna be putting our D-rings on the end. So you can put that on both ends. We're gonna be attaching our paracord to it with cow hitches. Because these are a little bit inset from the end, we we'll wanna just make our own measurements and not rely on the measurements of the jig. So going back to our starting place, Grab your base color. In this case, mine is the brown snake. And we're gonna to need to find the middle of that cord. This is always fun. All right, so once you found your middle, we're gonna attach it to the D-ring with a cow hitch. But we're gonna make it a little bit wider. So we're gonna do a half hitch on either side of this cow hitch. So going back through the loop, all of your cord through. And we'll leave just a little bit of a loop like that and put our cord up through it. So it'll look like that. We'll do the same thing on the other side. That's what it looks like when you're done. Basically two cow hitches side by side, but that are just linked together. So that's gonna be the bottom end. We're gonna run the cord to the other end. And we'll pretty much do the same thing. We're gonna attach these both to the D-ring with a cow hitch each. So we'll go down through the D-ring You want to go across the top this way and then back up through the D-ring and down through that loop. So now we'll do the same with the other side. You want to just make sure that your working ends, so the one that's not attached to the other end of the jig, goes to the outside. So now before we begin, we want to make sure that our jig is set to the right size for our hat. My measurement is 26 inches, so we're going to slide this up a bit. And we want to include those D-rings in the measurement. And I'm actually going to go about a half inch short so that I can tighten it at the end. And the way that we're doing the closure, it'll allow for some playroom. So instead of setting my jig to 26 inches, I want to slide it up a little bit more than that because we're going past the edge of this block here. So I've got measurements on my mat and I'll just measure it out on that. So I'll take it off the jig. And find my 26 inches. Once you have your jig set up to the right length, from peg to peg, you want to tighten down your cord so that your middle strands are very tight. You can even stretch them a little bit more than you think you have to because they're gonna loosen up during the project. Once you tighten that down, we're ready to begin the weave. Once your jig is set up, it should look like this with a two strand core and one cord out to each side. Then we're gonna grab a tan cord, or whatever your first color is, find the middle of it and loop that around the back of your core strands. And then we're gonna set that out of the way. Once that's positioned, take the two cords of your first color and we're going to be weaving them through the middle like in a trilobite bracelet. So you go over the first cord and underneath the second and pull all the slack through. Then with our left side, over that first cord, underneath the second. When you're done, you should have this X pattern right here. 
Both cords go over the first cord and then underneath on their way out of the two center strands. For consistency, I'm always going to do this left side cord second. Before you tighten this down, we're going to be weaving these two cords into this cross piece. So I'll take the left side first and pass it over those two, through the middle, and then up through here. That's going to lay down like this. So it's just wrapped around those two cross pieces. Same thing with the right side. Over the top of those two middle ones, and then up through this hole. And we'll tighten it down. So now you have two wraps with the working ends coming out on the inside. Tighten all that down. You have to kind of pull each cord one by one. And it should rest right underneath your cow hitches. We'll flip these out of the way again. And now we'll be adding in our dark brown color. So we'll set it up with another trilobite. So you have your cross again, or X in the middle. Now take that cord and loop it around your two core strands. Again, you want both sides to be even, same length on either cord. We're going to do the same thing with the brown cord as we did with the tan. Looping each cord around the middle of that X to come up through the middle. So before we add our tan, that's what it should look like. So now with our left cord, we'll go down through the middle strands, but to the outside of your brown, and come up in the middle of your brown, but make sure it comes to the left of our standing end. So then once you pull the rest of your cord through, you can see we've wrapped it towards the outside. Do the same thing with the other tan, down through here, up through the middle, up to the outside of the tan. So now before tightening all that down, it should look about like this. So now we can go ahead and tighten it. Again, just kind of tightening each cord as we go. You have to do a couple rounds of tightening so that nothing overlaps in weird ways. Once you tighten it down, it should look about like that. We want to slide our weave up towards the top, do one more round of tightening, and then we'll move on to the next step. So now that we've completed that first row with our, both of our cords woven in there, we're going to flip our vertical cords up to the top to keep them out of the way. So then again, starting with our trial bite base, we're going to begin by weaving the middle cords, which in this case right now is the brown. So we can just take both of those cords, put them over our cross piece, and then bring them both up to the outside. So not, not through the middle, but to the outside. Pull the slack through, and it should look like this. And now we're going to do the same thing with our tan cords, just to the outside of those brown. So both of those tans go between the middle strands, but outside of our brown. And then each is going to come up to the outside of its own color. And again, before you tighten, it should look about like this. So now that we're at our widest point, with a full eight stripes across, 
we're going to start weaving back towards the inside. So we'll flip these cords up and out of the way. And we're going to add one optional step that just makes the trilobite part look a little bit more finished. So before we cross them over, we're going to wrap them around their own strands once. So what that does is on the side, it fills in the gaps so we don't have an uneven wrap around the edge. So now with that wrapped, we can go ahead and do our normal trilobite. So there's what our trilobite should look like before adding in our colors. We'll bring our brown first, down and around, but up through the inside this time. Keeping both cords together. And that's what brown should look like before adding on our tan. And we'll do the same thing with our tan, down and to the inside. Now we'll tighten all that down. First starting with our base color, then our inside cord, then our outside cord. Once it's done, it should look like that. So now we're just about done with that inside diamond. So on this next step, our tan cord is gonna go to the middle to complete this outer diamond X pattern. We'll flip these out of the way again. Do our added step before the trilobite. So for our tan and our brown to switch places, we'll again start with our brown. And now that we finished our little diamond, we're again gonna be weaving towards the outside. So both down and around and up to the outside. So when you're done with your brown, it should look like this. Instead of leaving these cords down here, we wanna leave them out to the side because with our tan, we're going to be wrapping around the brown as well. So starting on the outside of the brown, we're going to come up to the inside of the tan. And our brown is still on the outside. Doing the same thing here. Again, we don't want it down here. We want to keep it to the outside wrapping our tan around all that, coming up to the inside of itself. Should look like that when we're done. And we'll tighten that down. So now our brown and our tan has switched places. On the bottom side, just so you can double check your own work as you're going, you won't have these neat stripes, you'll have them overlapping like that. So now we're almost done with the first iteration of our pattern. So to complete that border, we need to bring these tan cords together. So we're going to be weaving them to the inside. Like that. Now that our brown is on the way outside, we want to weave that towards the inside of itself as well. So before you tighten down, this step should look like this. So there's a completed first round of that pattern. So now we're basically going to start back where we did at the beginning and start weaving towards the outside again to open up this tan border. So with our trial bite base ready again, We'll start with our tan, because that's still in the middle. And we'll be weaving towards the outside. Add in our brown, also towards the outside. And it looks like that. Make sure my previous row is tight. So now for our next row, now that we've opened up those tan cords again, we need our brown to go back to the middle. So again, we're gonna do 
pretty much the same thing we did to get them to the outside, just in reverse. So flip them up out of the way and set up our trial light. So even though our brown is on the outside, because the brown's going to the inside this time, we're back to the center of our, to make our next diamond, we need to start with that. This is the only time that we'll start with our outside cord rather than our inside one. So wrap those towards the inside so it looks like this. And now our tan, with the right side this time, we're gonna be coming in between the wraps of our brown. So inside of this one, but outside of this one. And it'll be coming to the outside of itself because we're on that portion of the, the border. Same with the other side. And wrap it to the outside. And that row, this is a pretty important one, looks like this. So you've got your brown starting on the outside and ending on the inside. So with that you should be able to go back over the previous steps where we started with our first wrap of brown on the inside back here and repeat that going forward. Once you reach the bottom of your jig, I'm just going to tuck these cords on the bottom side of the hat band. So I'll take it off the jig at this point. And it might help to have a fid. I don't have one on me right now, so we're just going to poke these down through. Alright, so now we've got a hat band but we've got two ends that are not attached. So to weave those two together, I'm gonna flip this D-ring around so the rounded part has the cow hitches on it. Like that. Same on the other side. Then we'll be using a fishtail braid to bind those together on the hat. So now we'll grab our hat and try it on. So we've got a little bit of a gap in between our two sides of our D-ring, but I think we can pull those together with a fishtail braid. You should have enough tan cord left to finish this off. If you don't, you can splice your two ends together and then that should be enough. I think this one side is gonna have what we need. It's about five feet. So we'll thread that through both D-rings to pull those together. Make sure your ends are even. And then we're just gonna do a fishtail weave as if these were the center strands of our bracelet. So take this right side cord, put it down through the middle of those and up through the D-ring. Then we'll do the same thing with this top cord, down through the middle, up through the other D-ring, then back to the other side, same way. So just continue that pattern until you fill up the space with your cord. So at this point, you'll probably wanna double check that size on your hat, just to see if you need to cinch it down more or loosen it up a little bit. Once you've adjusted it, go ahead and finish it off with a square knot. So overhand knot to one direction. And then overhand knot the other direction. And tie that nice and tight. Now we're going to be doing single strand fish tails to make our snake tails. Fish tails, snake tails, same thing. So take one side of your cord, you can set the other one aside for now. 
and make about two inches of a loop and then bring it underneath so you have a full loop and then down through the middle and then down through the middle to the other side. If you've done a single strand fishtail bracelet before, exactly the same as that. Just keep on doing that until you fill up your entire snake tail. I had to adjust this a little bit shorter so that I had enough cord, but I think it turned out pretty well. We'll copy that on the right side. All right, so we finished those off and cleaned up the bottom by melting the ends. Let's try it on the hat and see how it looks. Perfect. I think that turned out pretty good. It definitely would have been cooler if we could have gotten the rattlesnake head on there instead of the tails, but that's a little bit harder to do in paracord. Maybe if we get enough comments asking for that, we'll have to figure it out. Thanks for sticking with us on this one. It was a bit more involved of a tutorial, but I think it was worth it in the end. We'll put links in the description for where you can buy supplies. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.